It's time for the Financial Crisis Talk Center with Ken Gross and David Einstein from Fav Gross. Credit card debt is number one. I think it, I view it as financial cancer. Forty percent of your gross income is going to just pay the debt service. You got no chance to get now. I would give up my credit score to get rid of debt. Here's your host, Ken Gross. Good morning. Welcome to the Financial Crisis Talk Center. We've got a special guest in the studio with us today, candidate for Wayne County Executive Warren Evans. We're going to be the word of the day for this segment is why, as in why Warren. We've got a primary election coming up on August 5th, Tuesday, shortly, very soon. It's the runoff between the Democratic candidates, which in reality means the runoff for typically the winner and the next Wayne County executive. Warren Evans is the front runner. We're going to sit down, go through why should the electorate vote for him? What does he have to offer? What does he have to say? We're going to go through all the issues. I want to welcome my co-host, Brian Small. Good, Good morning, morning, Brian. Good morning, Ken. Wonderful to be here. It's an exciting political time right now, and uh, it's, it's kind of fun to be involved in all of this. It, 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 politics is always fun. It, 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 it can cause you to pull your hair out, Brian, but you don't have to worry yeah, about Yeah, I don't that. have to worry too much about that anymore. So I want to welcome Warren. Warren, good morning. It's great to have you in the studio. Uh, I know you've been busy, as can be, running around from one spot to the other on the campaign trail, so we, we welcome the opportunity to have you in the studio uh, for a half hour to go through the issues. Ken and Brian, great to be here. So how are things going? So you're on the, you're on the campaign trail. Thing, I, I, I just saw, I mean, just by way of background, because you know, as much as your name is out there, people I don't think always do a good job of getting you know, the background and understanding how much experience someone brings to the table and wh where they're coming from. Because once the name's out there, it becomes name A versus name B, and who then gets more of the uh, spots on TV and gets more recognition that way. But, you, but let's look at, I want to just kind of mention a little bit of history, because you know, you've got four decades of service in Wayne County, two terms as the Wayne County Sheriff, assistant Wayne County prosecutor, and former Wayne County uh, assistant Wayne County executive, former uh, uh, chief of uh, Detroit police. Am I missing anything? And a lawyer, obviously, yeah. if you're an assistant prosecutor. There were uh, uh, probably a few other <coughs> jobs along the line. I've been a college professor, too, for, uh, for a while. But, yeah, actively involved in city and county government for the better part of 40 years. Now, where did you get to start? Was it as a rookie uh, 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 policeman or as, you know? Yeah, I, you know, I was looking for a job at, uh, at the end of my 20th year, the beginning of my 21st year, and I wandered down to the city county building and filled out an application to be a deputy sheriff uh, and started my career working in the Wayne County Jail. Uh, and, then, and then from there, when did you decide to go to law school? Was it while you were uh, during the course of working? or? Yeah, absolutely. I uh, uh, went to undergraduate school, grad school, and law school while working. Uh, I worked my way up. Uh, in the sheriff's department through the ranks of, you know, police officer, sergeant, lieutenant, inspector, So commander. I guess from your 20s on, you haven't been working a 40-hour work week then. <laughs> no, and particularly in law school, and you guys can appreciate that. Uh, that's, a, that's a tough nut to crack when you're working 40, 60 hours a week. But, uh, yeah, 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 absolutely. I, I remember I had this big ambition because I had gone into the workforce for a while and then decided to go back to school, finished undergrad, and I was headed to law school. And I said, right, I'm going to work part-time while I'm in law school. And I was working for an accounting firm. And, in fact, David Einstein, my co-host, I was working for his father. And I worked that whole summer, and then law school started in the fall, and after the first week, I walked into his office, as Milt is uh, David's father, and said, Milt, I'm out of here. I'll see you in the spring. I can't do both. It's Because it, it's, it, it's tough. And to work full time and go through law school, I've, I've, I always tip my hat to, to the guys, that, guys and gals that do that. So let's, uh, what about education? Uh, bachelor's degree uh, from Madonna University, master's degree from the University of Detroit Mercy, and my law degree from uh, Michigan State. Excellent. Detroit right. College of Law at the time I went. There, there you go. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I tell, if you took a, take about, talk about strategic changes, 
Detroit College of Law changing to Mich Michigan State University boosted their recognition and status t not even tenfold. Because I'm from Wayne State, and we were always considered ourselves to be uh, you know, a, a step ahead on, on DCL from the standpoint of, of the rankings back back in my day. And then now when you look at it, Michigan State, you know, Wayne's kind of chasing the Michigan State name because, you know, Michigan State's got such a big name. But let's talk about the election. Uh, recent poll as of July 24th from Strategic Solutions that was reported uh, on, 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 Fox, on, on Fox News has you leading at 30.4%. Bill Wild is your next um, uh, in second place, so to speak, at 15.7. Phil Kavanaugh, 9.6. Facano, the incumbent, 6.7. And then uh, McNamara down at 4.1. So you're looking pretty good, I would say. Yeah, two to one lead with, uh, you know, 10 or 12 days to go is, uh, is, a, is a good lead in the polls. But again, I always remind myself that polls don't vote, people do. And you know, I, I walk around every day and people pat you on the shoulder and say, I got you on this, I got you on this. Well, you know, 100 gotchas is not even one vote. So yeah, you yeah. got to get the people out to vote and you got to get the vote. But yeah, I'd much rather run from, uh, from the top spot. Yeah. yeah, the one, the, the, the other spot that I didn't mention is you still got 29.2 listed as undecided. But, you know, that which that's that's a big number. So, you know, if, you know if you, I guess yeah, you, gotta, you always have to carry the undecideds if the undecideds bother even to show up. I was going to say, if the undecideds decide to show up is the question. I, what is the anticipated turnout in this election? Do you, I mean, low, high, average? Does anybody have any indicators at this point? Not really. There's There's no particularly big issue... Uh, to bring people in an off-year election, generally the turnout is between 19 and 22 percent, which is an abysmally uh, low number. But uh, and, you know, we, we we are working very hard to get the vote out. Um, but As assuming we don't have a day full of thunderstorms and uh, would-be tornadoes and things like that, I'm going to go out there and predict a little bit higher turnout because of some re-energy that I'm feeling in the community with regard to Detroit. That just I, I just I'm getting in a f all over the place. I'm seeing positive spin in terms of Detroit making with the bankruptcy and making a move and, and, and the vote going very favorable. I see positive trends going and I think a, a good turnout certainly would be a helpful thing. You kind of look at me like I'm crazy. I, 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 I actually think I, I'm, maybe I'm a little too cynical, but I honestly believe that there's way too much apathy when it comes to voting. All right, we're going to take a break, come back, and I talk about some recent endorsements, and then we're going to find out why Warren. We'll be back. Carrying too much debt? Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke, and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, Dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Are you struggling to pay your mortgage? Afraid of foreclosure and the financial mess it can cause? Time is not on your side. Call Alan Stalter, the short sale specialist. For years, Alan has been helping distressed homeowners navigate through the short sale process. His experience will get you out of your home without the credit score damage that follows foreclosure. If you want a fresh start, you need to call Alan Stalter, the short sale specialist, 248-854-3829 or MetroDetroitShortSale.com. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. Going from hourly to salary seemed like a good career move, but now you're working 60 hours a week instead of 40, and you aren't getting paid any of that extra time. You're stuck, right? Wrong. You can be on salary and still be entitled to overtime. If you've been wrongly denied such pay, you may be entitled to that and more. Gold Star Law is here to help you through your employment law problem, whatever it is. Gold Star Law. Protecting employees' rights. Call 1-800-WAGES-10 for a free consultation today. If you're retired and in a financial crisis, there is a way out. 
It pains me when I see a retired couple exhaust their savings by paying credit card bills and for a home hopelessly underwater. Favgro specializes in helping retired people in financial crisis. You just can't keep paying until you're broke. You need to address the problem now. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. Uh, welcome back. We've got Warren Evans running for Wayne County Executive, front runner in the polls, with us in the studio. We're going over the word of the day today is why Warren. Warren, I, I have to tell you, you've had some outstanding recent uh, endorsements. The Detroit Free Press, Cranes, these are things that, you know, that, me out in the suburbs, I'm, I'm reading those all the, uh, all the time and seeing them. The Service Employees International Union, uh, Kim Worthy, the mayor, Duggan. Uh, interesting one on the mayor. I thought maybe mayor was uh, being supported with uh, Bill Wild because he had this big postcard out there I saw. <laughs> well, you know, the postcard turned out to be, uh, um, if you listen to, to Wild, just an innocuous. He just wanted to show that he'd be happy to work uh, with Mike Duggan, but obviously... Before he sent it out, he knew I was endorsed by Duggan, and it was it, it, it seemed to me clearly to try to mislead voters to think that there was some connection there that wasn't there. But that's politics. Yeah, I thought it was a little on the wild side myself. Uh, you know, I just uh, I, I hadn't noticed it until I was kind of doing some homework for the show, and it, it got picked up in the media. And then the mayor made a statement saying, "Hey, uh, this wasn't uh, this wasn't my doing," kind of a thing. Uh, I suppose you could send out a postcard and put two pictures on it anytime you want and uh, with a little disclaimer. And the problem, that kind of goes to a different issue. Is in, in, and you're seeing it right now a lot with the media war going on in a national scale over all these is issues. Uh, what's going on in the Middle East with Israel and Hamas, uh, what's going on uh, down at the border, is social media creates perception just by doing it regardless of whether there's any validity behind it. And then I think that fever gets caught up even into the national media where they start reporting on what's being reported regardless of whether there's any you know, veracity behind it. It, 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 it. it troubles me a lot. But let, let's talk, what's your vision? How are we gonna, where does Wayne County fit in to the metropolitan Detroit situation? Everyone knows, you know, Fecano obviously is behind in the polls. Um, we've seen financial problems for the city of Detroit. We've seen financial problems for Wayne County. Are those problems being solved, or do they still need to be solved, and are you the one that can solve them? Well, they still need to be solved, and, and yes, I think I'm the one that, uh, that can solve them. Let me back up just a second. Though. The thing that uh, probably troubles me the most with the, the campaign hypocrisy kinds of issues sure. is the candidates all stand up and say, hey, you know, Wayne County has to be transparent. You know, we have to change the way politics and government is handled in Wayne County. And then, you know, obviously uh, in their own personal dealings, that's not necessarily true. But, yeah. I, do know, as I say, not as I do. Exactly. Uh, a, a couple of things about, uh, you, know, you know, first thing I'll ask for uh, if I'm elected as a forensic audit, because I'm not sure what the real numbers are. And, and, and quite frankly, they could be worse uh, than we think they are now. So you got to have a ground floor to start from uh, yeah. to try I, to figure out. I think out. my anticipation and most would be whenever you, whenever that happens, the results are all usually worse, not better. Well, yeah. you can put a, public sp a positive spin on any number, and everybody's going to try and make everything look better once they're in the in that seat but the reality is is this probably a lot lot worse than than any of us know is a, is a financial manager a possibility for Wayne County well I think it's a possibility but not a probability I think that uh, the governor number one uh, would like to see a county executive that had the ability to manage uh, and not all of the candidates do uh, the second thing I think is that the emergency manager functions differently in a county than a city because while the emergency manager can take control from the county executive and the county commission, you still got to negotiate with the other four elected officials that he doesn't have direct control over. And so the prosecutor and the, the county clerk and the register of deeds and the sheriff uh, are all people who can affect the outcome. Um, you know, that's a distinction that the population, I don't think, understands. It's a, that, explain that. Uh, the, the executive, I guess... As Wayne County Executive, 
the key is being able to create a coalition and commonality among this group of leaders so that everyone's on the same page. Absolutely, and that's what Wayne County has not done well for 30 years, and, and that's the paradigm change that needs to happen um, you know, with, uh, with this election. Uh, it, it is inconceivable to the average person uh, that Wayne County elected officials are so... Uh, territorial, or what is it? I think territorial is yeah. it, but, but, but I don't want to blame the other elected officials because, quite frankly, the 800-pound gorilla is the county executive. And if the county executive is not prepared to cooperate, uh, to give you a sufficient budget, um, to do the things that allow you to do the job you were elected to do, then we're failing at both ends. I mean, obviously, Wayne County has had ridiculously poor projects, both planning execution, all of that. Taxpayers' money's been wasted. On the other hand, they don't adequately fund the other elected officials who have a function that should be done, and so we lose on both ends. Those people don't have enough money to do their job correctly, uh, and we throw money out of the window at the other end uh, on silly projects. Yeah, for sure. I guess if you're, if you're sitting there and, and the guy that you're looking up to the top who's supposed to be the leader to make sure everything's being done in a common cause, commonality, is not being fair with you, then you're going to say, hey, i got to grab as many chips as I can for myself and others be damned. Otherwise, I'm going to go down. I don't want to go down with the ship. I have to make my ship look good. Let them all fend for themselves. Like, is that what, that's probably what we have right now. Right, and, and so it never looks like a team. And so when you want to go to Lansing for resources or you want to go to Washington for resources, I mean, it, Wayne County looks like a joke to them. And while people may argue always that it is a political Republican-Democrat issue, part of it might be, but oftentimes it's who wants to sink money down a rat hole. If, if you see Wayne County as unable to manage its resources and do anything positive, I, too, would be reluctant to send it any more money. And so that needs to change. The transparency needs to change and the management ability. You asked earlier, why me? Why me? Because I've been doing it for 35 years. And I have had successful results with every job I've had. Uh, and I, in, in number of them, whatever it was, if it's a law enforcement-related job, People have to understand that you're managing a budget. You're still a manager. The chief of police with a $450 million budget, uh, at the end of the day, has to manage the budget. He has to manage two objectives. He's got to get things done. He's got to do it with the money he's got. And he doesn't go out and cry, if you give me 500 more officers, I can do a better job. No. You do the best you can with what you have. You move the needle forward. That's what I've done all my life. I suppose there's definitely a distinction there because we we've been hearing about we've been hearing the crying all the time. Oh, the tax base is gone. I need more money for this. I need more money for that. And then I get the electorate says, well, we don't have any money. And where are we going to get the money from? I, I like so your perspective is you got to work with what you have and make everybody work together. Yeah, we manage poorly. If you manage your resources better, you, you, you know you're going to get positive results. Makes sense. We'll come back right after the break and stay on this. Carrying too much debt. Resolve your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke, and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Thav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. You like your job. What you don't like is the way your boss has been treating you. He's making comments about how you look instead of your work, and he's been touching you inappropriately. If you complain, is he allowed to fire you? Absolutely not. Unwelcome sexual comments, advances in contact are illegal in the workplace. Make him pay. Gold Star Law is here to help you through your employment law problem, whatever it is. Gold Star Law, protecting employees' rights. Call 1-800-WAGES-10 for a free consultation today. Is the debt piling up? Struggling to get by? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Every family has the family meeting. And we all know what that means. Dad's got dementia. What are we going to do? What's the care plan 
that the family has in place. Usually they don't or they struggle with a care plan. When you go home tonight and you talk to your tax person and you talk to your financial person, say, what's the plan that you have in place? And as soon as they don't give you an answer, give me a call because I can do it for you. Tax problems are major problems. Don't let the IRS levy your wages and seize your assets. There is a solution. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. If you're behind on your taxes and owe money to the IRS, call Thav Gross. We've been solving tax problems for 32 years. We stop wage levies, resolve unfiled returns, and obtain the best possible settlements. Call Thav Gross today, 888-235-HELP. Uh, we're back. I want to do announcements, then so we're going to come back to Warren Evans running for uh, Wayne County Executive. Uh, the, the show, Financial Crisis Talk Center, we are changing the name and the format. Probably going to be, we, we pushed it back a little bit, we're going to probably wait till the kids go back to school. It's going to be law and reality starting in September, broader scope of subjects. Kind of, we kind of, we're kind of migrating the show that way anyway, but we thought we'd change the name to make it consistent with it. If you're dealing with financial problems and you're behind on your mortgage, we have a special report called How to Save Your Home with Regulation X, The Hidden Secrets. It's free. Just go to uh, regxhomesaver.com. You can download the free report. It, it, it Actually, you're not downloading it. You click the link and we'll email it to you so you don't have to worry about a, clicking on a link and getting some kind of crazy virus or something. I will never click on a link that I don't know who sent it to me, no matter what it says. It could be the bank saying uh, you've got all this money in the account, and that would be the last link I would ever click on because if you don't know how much money you have in the account, you don't need an email to tell you. So, you know, just reghomesaver.com, regxhomesaver.com. I want to thank our sponsors, Gold Star Law, Samasco Law, uh, REO Services, Allen Stalter Short Sale Specialist, Trips Auto Shop and Collision Center in Jackson and Lansing, and U.S. Staffing in Jackson and Lansing. We have a seminar coming up. Uh, it is Wednesday, September 10th. I hate saying September 10th already because that's like the summer is You, you gone. just skipped the whole month of August. But uh, Well, because we're not doing a seminar in August because we're all going to have fun and, 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 he, and the election's going to heat up and after everyone's going to be tired after August 5th. Uh, the name of the seminar is Get Serious About Debt, Debt Elimination. It covers my Our whole theory is if you want to save money for the future and have something to retirement, it starts with minimizing debt. And if you're sitting there with too much debt, that dream of putting $1,500 a month away can't come true unless you do something about it. This seminar is, is designed to tell you what your options are in order to do that. To sign up for it, go to thavgross.com or FinancialCrisisTalkCenter.com, or call 888-235-HELP. Uh, it is on Wednesday, September 10th, from 7 to 8.30, at our offices in, uh, in our conference room in Bingham Farms. All right, back, back uh, to work. You know, I was going to say, it's, it's kind of amusing that our goal for the individual is kind of the same goal for the county of Wayne. Minimizing expenses, minimizing waste, so we have a future. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. it's what... It's one of those things when you're talking to people, uh, you know, and I, I just say, you know, they governments have good names for stuff, structural deficits and uh, those sorts of things. And, you know, and you ask the people in the group, anybody here got a structural deficit? No, because right. you can add and subtract. And, and when uh, you're short of money, you stop doing the nice-to-do stuff and you put your money on the must-do stuff. It's, it's no different from a county. It's just given a different name. Counties have the ability to kick the can down the road longer than the average a homeowner can't. doesn't mean we should, and it doesn't mean good management allows it to happen. It means that's what we've done, and we have to turn that around. A absolutely. What I do with the, with the homeowner and the resident is I th is no structural anything. I, I say, you got a cigar box? Okay, whatever goes in the cigar box, that's your income. You can take all that money, and you can take it out of the cigar box. Your job is to have a few dollars left in the cigar box at the end of the month, and if the cigar box is empty, you're done. Maybe you could do some county seminars for me when uh, be glad to <laughs> when we get there. But yeah, you know, that cigar box mentality gets lost in the shuffle as you get into. Well, it starts with our federal government. They're allowed to be, you know, they're they're allowed well, to be. They they print change, money. You know, it's, trillion, it's a, it's a, yeah, debt. it's a little different with the federal government. They just print money. Yeah, we, we Warren, if you become Wayne County Executive, why don't you start printing money and then solve the problem that way? I think I'd rather do what every uh, 
a good homeowner does. Uh, go with the is, cigar box. Yeah, go with the cigar box. I think we wind up a lot better down the road. I, 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 I think for the sake of the county, that would, uh, that's definitely a, a, a good a good way to start. Talk about public safety. We're, we're running out of time, as always. Give me, you know, public safety is also, I think, number one on people's minds at all times. What, what, what are your thoughts? What, what can you do as Wayne County Exec to improve it? Uh, another why me. Uh, 68 percent about of the county's general fund budget goes to courts, prosecutor, sheriff. Two-thirds of the county budget is law enforcement. There's nobody remotely close to this race that has lived that for 35 years as I have. I mean, I've, I, I've worked every job in the court other than being a court reporter. Uh, you know, I have uh, worked in the prosecutor's office, the sheriff's office. But bigger than that, I understand how all of them relate from the initial police department going through the county functions to the state function, which is corrections at the end. And so, you know, I can see the synergies and I can see where uh, things balloon and need to be fixed so that the system can t continue to operate uh, uh, correctly. I mean, I, I think that's really a strong suit for me if there is one, is that, uh, that I understand that. I've developed programs over the last 25 years. They've been successful. We've made things work. Uh, and I think it makes the county safer. And if it makes the county safer, better quality of life, and it leads to um, advances in everything from business to, uh, to yeah, everything else. Good, good points. You know, I, I, it came to mind when, when, you, when you said that you've worked every job. You, were you ever a court officer in the courtroom? While, you, know, you really have. Been, you've been in every single role. Yeah. That, 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 that's phenomenal. We're, we're, we're coming up at the end. Why Warren as opposed to Bill Wilde or, or Phil Cavanaugh? Well, I, I think experience uh, managing large budgets is one thing. And, and now I'm starting to see more and more, and I don't you know, really want to spend a lot of time with it because it's try to stay positive. But, uh, you know, this, this issue of transparency and keeping your eye on the prize and, you know, seems to get lost with fighting and under the table uh, political stuff down near the end of the election. You know, I'm, I'm a big boy. I understand that uh, those things happen. But I think uh, they ought to be trying to get voters to vote for them and not spending so much time attacking others. As a voter, never run for political office. Whenever I'm trying to decide who to vote for, I always am pulling my hair out because all I do when, it, when I hear a commercial and all I do is hear about what the other guy did wrong and I don't hear what the candidate is proposing to do, it's a distraction. I guess it's one that we all have to live with. We're kind of, we've, unfortunately, we've run out of time. Last question for you. It's August 5th. Person's at the voting booth. They're undecided. They're looking at the names. Why pick Warren? Who's the guy that's been around Wayne County the longest, uh, has worked successfully in every capacity, has never had integrity issues or people around them indicted, has kept his eye on the prize, and loves Wayne County? I guess that, I guess that sums that's it up. good as it gets. Warren Evans, I want to thank you for joining us on the Financial Crisis Talk Center. I wish you the best of luck in the primary. August 5th, coming up. We'll find out the results shortly. Thanks, Best Ken. Thank you, Brian. Brian.